Hi friends! Today is going to be my reading vlog for the Summer Scare Readathon. <laughs> Here, the Summer Scare Readathon is a readathon that I host in the summer where I read spooky books. Sometimes just books with magic in them in general that aren't actually spooky, but hey, that's neither here nor there. I am filming this at the end of the week, so I do already know that there were some books that I didn't get to um, and had some other books that I ended up reading instead. Um, but I'm gonna go through and give you a description of everything that I read during the week and then we'll go into the clips of the week and then we'll go into the wrap-up. Three books on the list were parts of the Sarah Normal series by Phoebe Rivers, who is actually not a human. It's a, a group of different writers for, by Simon Spotlight. Um, I read the books two, three, and four. This series follows Sarah, who I believe at the start of the series is 12, and her and her father move from the west coast to the east coast, and Sarah is able to see ghosts. They've never really been a problem for her. They've never really done anything other than just she can see them. But when they move to the East Coast, she starts seeing more of them more frequently and they start talking to her and asking things of her. Um, so this is just like a fun mid-grade series. Those are for the prompts of mid-grade, a spooky word, and under 200 pages. For the prompt of a book with blood on the cover, I will be reading Blood Witch by Susan Dennard because it has the word blood on the cover. This series follows four main characters plus some excellent side characters, uh, but the Witchlight series follows Safi, Azult, Edwin, and Merrick, and they are witches in this witch land. They all have powers, they have different powers that they learn throughout the series. There's a lot of battles and fighting and political stuff and all kinds of things in this series that I absolutely adore. This is also a reread for me that will actually also, by the time we get to the end of this week, cover the prompt of a book with witches in it. Just an FYI. For a horror or thriller, I have Horrid by Katrina Leno. This book follows Jane, who moves with her mother from the West Coast to the East Coast. What? To her mother's childhood home. Um, her father has recently died. Jane's father has recently died. And um, they have no money and they have nowhere to go, so they pack up and go to where Jane's mother grew up. Um, it is a vacant home. All she knows is that there's like a room on the second floor that the door is locked. She's told that it's storage and maybe that's not actually the case. And it's spooky and all of that. For the prompt of a queer main character, I have Beyond the Ruby Veil by Mara Fitzgerald. This book follows Emanuela who lives in a world where they don't have water and they have these water witch people who make them water from blood and basically if you get this spot on your body it means that you're supposed to go to the tower where they drain your blood and make you your blood into water and you die and Emanuela has had this spot on her since she was a little girl and she never went and turned herself in and it's her wedding day and she's getting married to her best friend and they're both gay and they don't actually want to get married for love reasons because obviously that wouldn't work out. They want to get married for political reasons and and then the water witch lady finds out that she's got the spot on her so she takes her to the tower and she ends up killing the lady and that's just like the first couple of chapters. I also this week end up reading for a book with orange on the cover Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno, which is set on a small island with a very small populace of people. Our main characters are witches of sorts. They have this bird that visits every year, like one bird that visits every year and it is what makes their town super popular. It's a touristy thing and this year the bird is not returning and people are kind of freaking out about it and there's just like a whole thing mess of magic and stuff going on. It's a fun time. Also this week I'll be reading Geraldine's Alley by Becca C. Smith. Doesn't fit any of the prompts but I end up reading it during this week so we might as well just talk about it. Okay this book follows Geraldine who is in her early 20s and she lives with her grandmother because her parents 
were killed uh, very violently a few years prior and she works at this bookstore and her friends are basically the characters from books like she envisions them in her real life and she talks to them um, and helps uses them basically to help her work through her problems. She's very shy, very nervous. Um, this book follows her and like there's a love interest and there's this alley that she's terrified of and this book kind of like is a progression of her overcoming her fears and learning more about the people around her and all of those things. Those are all the books I, I will read this week. I mean I could lie to you and tell you that I will plan to read them this week but we already talked about the fact that this is after the fact so those are all the books that I'm reading this week and uh we'll just jump into clips and I uh, will see you back here for a wrap up at the end. It is about 7 30 so I've went to work, I've came home, I've made dinner, I've ate dinner, I've got the dog situated. Uh there's currently like a thunderstorm going outside so they're freaking the fuck out. Uh but for the majority of the day I have been listening to Blood Witch by Susan Dennard and I am on page 305 it is I believe 66% if I do remember looking correctly. Um, that's going to be it for this today. This is a reread for me. I am as always with Suze's books every time I read do a read through I learn so many more things that I didn't pick up the first time. She has very intricate plot lines that are very woven together. It's it really is more in my opinion like adult high fantasy than like YA. Um, but again, that's my opinion. So it takes a couple of read throughs to kind of grab everything. And, and sometimes, you know, things that you didn't think were important, you realize the next round through, like, oh, how did I miss that? That's super important. So 66% um, into this, I'll probably finish this tomorrow. I have three audiobooks. So I'm probably gonna try to do one every two days, but I don't know, we'll see. So for the rest of the evening, I am going to be working on Sarah Normal book two, which is Haunted Memories. This does have a bookmark in it on chapter five, but I don't remember starting this ever before. So I'm just going to start from chapter one and see where we end up. Because if I did start this before, it would have been during last year's readathon. So I would have no idea. I'm just going to go ahead and start this from the beginning and I should be able to finish this tonight. It is just 160 pages. So if I finish this, um, which Sam's live stream starts relatively soon, so if I finish this tonight, then I'll go ahead and start the third book in the series, um, which I believe is also 160 pages. So we'll see how that goes, and I'll give you an update here in just a little bit. I finished Sarah Normal, book two, Haunted Memories, uh, in a surprise to absolutely no one. It made me cry. The interesting thing about this series so far, as I'm only on book two, and I did I had previously read the first four chapters. I was on chapter five whenever I stopped. As I was reading through it, I was like, yeah, I remember this. Um, but I just read it anyway because, I mean, it's, it was like 15 pages. Who cares? The thing about this so far is, like, it's not super spooky. Like, I've actually read mid-grade that was spookier than this. This is probably lower mid-grade. But I really like the story behind it. Like, the like why the ghosts are there and they're I mean they're PG friendly reasons clearly I think this series would definitely help kids understand death and um unexplainable things but also um like Sarah has to learn to overcome fear and to like do public speaking and to step outside of her comfort zone and to make new friends in a new town and so it teaches them not only about um, death and things on that spectrum, but also life and and how to you know be real humans. So um, I don't. I'm not gonna rate this. I think I'll wait till the end for the wrap up to do all of my ratings for these. Um, but I did really enjoy it. It's only 9:30, so it took me at less than two hours to read this one because I goofed off on my phone, played on my phone for a while too and Sam's live show got canceled because she's not feeling well which hopefully she's feeling better by now by the time you see this because it will have been like a week and a half so that's important um but I, I did really enjoy this I think I'm gonna pick up book two do I want to pick up book two and start that and read through one through three really quick or do I want to pick up something different I'm not gonna read anything else completely tonight because it's 
probably go to bed like in the next hour or so. I may pick up book two tonight, or book three, technically book three of this series. I may pick up the next book in this series uh, tonight, and I may not. I don't know. Um, I have a couple of other things I want to do. I need to put this in my reading planner to log all of my my progress for all of the different readathons that I'm doing. So I'm going to do all that, and then I'll decide if I'm going to pick up another book or not. Hello friends, it is now 9.30 on Tuesday, 9.30 p.m. to clarify. Um, I have not read anything yet today, so I guess it's time to do that. I am going to work on Mischief Night, the third book in the Sarah Normal series. I'm going to try to read all of this tonight, but we'll see what happens. Tonight was uh, author tube chat for this month with Kate for... Um, I believe in a thing called love by Maureen Gu and we also discussed um, our opinions on leaving reviews for our, our books of our peers and of our friends um, so we discussed that if you would like to watch that I'll link that down below um, so because of that I haven't had a chance to read today um, can I read this before bed maybe so I'm gonna sit down and work on this for a little bit I'm gonna try to read it before bed but we'll see what happens Pretty coarser. It is Wednesday now. I stopped and picked up hibachi for dinner. If it'll focus on oh, my delicious hibachi for dinner. It's gonna take me a couple of days to eat this, but it looks delicious as always. Currently watching Margaret at the Book Nerds uh, April wrap up, which she posted today. Perfectly on time, she said sarcastically. And I am currently surrounded by one doggo. Oi, two doggos. One kitty cat. Oi, there's the other doggo. Yes, everybody's here. So, dinner first, then we'll discuss books. But, I mean, dinner first, right? So, in the meantime of doing this Summer Scare Readathon, I'm also doing the Avengers Initiative Reading Challenge. If you've been here this year, you already know that because it's been an all year thing. Well, see, this thing just happened where I just finished the Loki board, um, which basically just means like I hit all of the prompts that are on the board for Loki. Um, unfortunately, my dumbass suggested the idea of if we were going to have Loki as a character, then his power, because you get a power if you, you know, get a character. Um, his power should be, you know, there there has to be some kind of like a good thing and a bad thing because I mean it's Loki. Like sometimes he's a good character and sometimes he's a bad character. And my dumbass suggested that in the chat and then it happened. And so now I just finished the Loki board and I gotta go spin a damn wheel to see what kind of death trap I just landed myself in. So I figured I'd bring you guys along with me. I know it's not really summer scare readathon related, but it's content, eh? So, uh, wish me luck. The whole chat, I was like, crap, I just finished the Loki board. I got very, very much, uh, some may the odds be ever in your favor, and good lucks with the <laughs> face. So. Picker wheel. Trust this domain. I mean, you don't have to if you don't want to, but I recommend you do. Um, so essentially, our options are get help, this reward is a trick, which we still don't know what the heck that actually means. Um, must use a 500 plus page book as your next read. That's gonna fuck me up. Uh, use past group book for any one prompt. Steal any Avengers power. Start next month boards one day early. Use a Loki board on another board, or a Loki book on another board. An incomplete Avenger gets wiped. Excellent. You cannot use power to skip next boss battle. Gain 12 bonus hours next boss battle. Alright, let's just fucking do it. God, I hate my life. Why did I suggest this? Whose idea was this? Fuck, it was mine. Alright, yes! She win! Replace any prompt with a Loki prompt. Whew, okay. I can sleep now. Whew, righty. This will be fine. We can, we, can, we can do this. This we can do. It's Friday and we're in desperate need of a book update. Because like, have you even had an update? I mean, you haven't seen my face. 
talked a little bit on Wednesday, talked a little bit on Thursday, didn't see my face. Don't think we actually talked about reading. So maybe we should do some of that. Yeah? I might have showed you this already. I don't know. But we're going to show it again if we have it. I think we did. Maybe that's what we talked about on Wednesday. I don't remember. Anyway, um, things happened this week. Like I got this book and it has beautiful sprayed edges. Um, this is from Embossed and Spine. I have it on my Instagram if you want to know more about this lovely piece. I'm very excited um, about this. It's gorgeous. Okay, speaking of gorgeous things that showed up to my house this week. Witch Shadow. Gorgeous. Love it. I am so stoked on this. I know this is not what this video is about, but it showed up, so we're going to talk about it. Um, also, it's an embossed cover. It's gorgeous. It's purple. Purple's my favorite color. Um, you know, there's just so much that I love about this book. It's signed. I pre-ordered this from Schuler Books, which I believe is Suze's local indie. So, um, yeah. Gorgeous. I love it. It's signed. Gorgeous book showed up. But let's talk about books that we've actually read this week. Yeah. Um, so where we are so far. So far I have read Haunted Memories and Mischief Night, books two and three in the Sarah Normal series. Um, spooky mid-grade. Do I even remember which challenges they're for? One was for a mid-grade. One was for a book under 200 pages. Other than that, I don't know. I have finished Blood Witch, which was for book with blood on the cover. Blood Witch. Yeah. Okay. Um, what else have we read? There, we've read something else. Also today I finished Horrid by Katrina Leno. This was a ride, y'all. If you know me, you know that I love books that have that element of when you get to the end, you're like, okay, but was it paranormal or was it all in their head? And this is definitely one of those books and I really enjoyed it. So I've read, this was for a horror thriller, Blood Witch, these two. Is that everything I've read so far? Oh, I've also read, um, I also finished uh, Vampires Never Get Old, um, which is the anthology. I finished that also. Um, and that was for BIPOC author because there's a lot of different authors on that one. Uh, I am currently reading Beyond the Ruby Veil by Mara Fitzgerald. This is for a queer MC. I am currently, I think, 30% into this, enjoying it. Uh, tonight I have my Friday night productivity sprints and I'm either going to keep reading this and work on planner stuff or I'm going to read the next Sarah Normal book. I haven't completely decided yet. Um, because I have some things I can, I'm going to do tomorrow where I could listen to an audiobook. I don't know for sure. Um, I'm going to finish with this audiobook. I still have three more books to read for the readathon. Um, that I don't have audiobooks for, so when I finish that, I'll probably go ahead and start my audiobook for Witch Shadow, um, which I will not finish by the end of the readathon for sure because it's like 22 hours, I think. I'm excited, so I want to get to that ASAP. So I'm gonna have dinner and then I'm going to get to productivity sprints, and I will see you guys either during or after productivity sprints to let you know where I'm at. The live stream is over, I was able to read all of this book during the live. Uh, <laughs> this is definitely my favorite of these so far. There's actually a prologue, which is the first time there's been a prologue in the series. And at least I think so. I don't think the first book had a prologue. I read it last year, so I'm not really sure. Uh, this is the first time, at least in the last three books, that this series had a prologue. And it was... Well, there was a big plot twist that I had assumed was going to at some point be a plot twist but I had thought like if it was going to be it would have came up by now and it hadn't so I had kind of like pushed it away out of the back you know into the back of my mind and then it happened and it wasn't exactly what I thought it was going to be but it was definitely there and it kind of I mean despite the fact that I had thought that it was going to be a plot twist it kind of blew my mind uh because again it's 
it probably should have came up by now, but it hadn't, and there was a reason for why it hadn't, and I and I get it. Um, but it just like blew the mind. And then in this particular book, um, Spirits of the Season, it talks about like the 12 days uh, before Christmas, how that is a very prominent time for uh, ghosts who don't normally stick around to come back to spend time with their loved ones um, to make their loved ones feel like they're there and that's kind of the reasoning the books the books reasoning behind why um, we get so sentimental around Christmas time is because our family is actually there um, which is very you know one religion of them but that's a whole other thing for all other day but because we're getting to see all of these other spirits that you don't normally see and because Sarah has very few living family members left besides her father, um, she really wants to see her mom, who she's never met because her mom died during childbirth. And she doesn't meet her mom during this book. I think she does at some point during the series, but she doesn't during this book. But there are definitely some things that happen that are, well, A, surprising. Um, there's some things that I wasn't expecting again some some other plot twists throughout the book as well um but also just some really heartfelt moments that I, I i cried uh during the live show and not that that's unusual for me uh anymore but uh it was it was really good it's definitely my favorite of these so far this actually ended on such a high note that i'm considering not reading two more books from the Sweep series and reading the next two books in this series that I have instead um, because I do have two more in the series on my shelves. I'm not sure yet. I'm gonna see how they fall with the challenges and see if I decide to do that or not. They're not really much shorter, um, a little bit, but not a lot. And uh, so that's that's where I'm at. It is Saturday now. We're going to ignore the bag of takeout behind me because the girls gotta eat. Also, the dogs are roaming around so they're being very noisy. I finished Beyond the Ruby Veil vale by Mara Fitzgerald. I wanna talk about this book um, in particular uh, because this main character is an absolute shit show. I know that Emanuela is supposed to be an unlikable character. Like, I get that concept. But to me, she's not even redeemable. Like, if you're an unlikable character who is redeemable, I can get behind that. But Emanuela is not even, in my opinion, redeemable of a character. She is horrible to everyone, including her best friend, who she basically tells him that he's a waste of space, who would mean nothing if it wasn't for her. And he says something during the book about, um, she says, like, you couldn't do anything without me. And he's like, we'll never know because you'll never let me try. And she's just very, I don't like her, okay? I don't like her. Um, I have finished the book. Uh, I can take the bookmark out. I will probably pick up the sequel because I do like this world building and I would kind of like to know like where things go but like I, I'm not behind the love interest I don't get it I, I don't I don't get it so um I really like Mara I think she's great like the the author I am I like her like on social media but this book was not for me it's it's hard like I can also get behind a unlikable main character if there are other characters to like but Emanuela sees everyone like you're you're seeing it through her eyes I mean it's it's a it's a first person narrative so you're seeing it through her eyes and she hates everybody she, like she thinks lowly about everyone she thinks everyone is beneath her that she is like the absolute best that her shit don't stink she is the only one who can fix anything who should be allowed to do anything everyone is beneath her everyone else is the dog shit stuck to the bottom of her shoe like she hates everybody and so it's hard for you as a reader to find someone a character to enjoy when all we get is her opinions of people really so I think maybe that even is doing a disservice. Maybe if this book was in a different point of view, 
it might have rang better, but it was just okay. But I did really enjoy the world building, so that. As I finished that, I had more time in another audiobook, and I know I said I was going to read Witchlands, but I was like, but I don't have time to finish it, and I want to finish something, because I like to finish things. Um, so I waffled back and forth between reading The Project by Courtney Summers, um, because that would technically fall in line with the spooky books, but also there was this. Um, this is Geraldine's Alley by Becca C. Smith. Becca is a fellow author tuber and she has a video about how she published this book and like made the dress and did the audiobook and like she this is Becca on the cover like she made the cover also she made the dress she's wearing in the cover also it's a picture of her on the cover like this was a very like deep project for Becca. Uh, I'll link that video in the description box down below if you want to watch that process. Um, Becca is a friend of mine like I just I picked this up. I've read one other book by her so far. She has several, um, but I have read one other that I enjoyed. This book, I didn't think I was going to talk about it in this video, even though I was reading it wanting to finish something. Um, but I think it is applicable for the Summer Scare Readathon. The whole thing is like to read spooky books or to talk about things that are scary. And typically we talk about that as like either paranormal or thrillers or horror or something along that lines. Whereas this book is more about uh, Geraldine learning how to either overcome her fears or to live with the ones that she can't overcome. So this is like a very realistic idea of, though not realistic because there's some fantasy kind of elements, but it, it is a, a realistic view of how we deal with fear in our real lives. So I do think this fits with the theme of the Summer Scare Readathon. So I figured we would talk about it. So I finished this. I cried. I can see a lot of myself in Geraldine. I see a lot of Becca in Geraldine, let's be honest. I can also see a lot of myself in that you know, Becca and I are similar people and we're friends, so I get that. I have read some reviews that talk about um, how they feel like it's kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? not naive but juvenile. I've read some reviews that basically say that you know, it feels more like a YA whereas the main character is 22 but to say that 22 year olds don't have fear is really stupid. Like to say that 22 year olds aren't afraid of things and they don't live in worlds where they fear you know they don't have social anxiety they don't have fear of failure like that to me makes zero sense. So this does feel like an adult book to me because it's an adult living in the adult world. She has a job. She has a house. She's, you know, she, like she's living in the adult world and she has to deal with adult issues. So I don't know why this would be deemed juvenile to some people, but that's a taste thing, I guess. Um, I did really like it. I liked the characters. I liked the viewpoint of overcoming fear and, and that aspect of it but also um, I like that like Geraldine works in this used bookstore and she kind of makes friends with the imaginary characters of the books and they're kind of her friends and she uh, you know talks to them and kind of gets through her day and and there's a cute love interest. Um, if you're interested in this book I love the physical copy because again like Becca did all this work but also our friend Phoebe is the one who did the pictures for the chapter headings and they're gorgeous and um, the chapter titles are hilarious. Um, I love the chapter titles but I also love the headers that that Phoebe did. They're gorgeous. Um, so this 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 book is just like as I have said you know when I hold it um, like physical proof of all of the things that my friends are able to accomplish and I really have like loved this and cherished this um, since I bought it, but I needed to read it. So I have now done that and I have quite enjoyed it. Again, we'll talk about like actual ratings at the end of the readathon, at the, at the wrap up portion of this. So, so far, I've read everything. The only thing I have left are the two sweep novels, and I think it's about 330 ish pages worth of sweep novels because they're the sweep series is very short. Um, so I have book five and six, I think, to read. So I am going to eat lunch and check on a few things going on in the real world 
and if I have time to read more today I will and if not then I'll read more tomorrow. If I read both of those today and I still have a whole day left I might jump into The Project by Courtney Summers and or more Sarah Normal books and or read more of the Sweep series depending on like if I end on a cliffhanger or something crazy so I don't know we'll find out together. So instead of reading more books, I decided that I haven't watched this week's Loki yet because I wanted to not focus on that. I wanted to focus on reading, but I'm doing so well that I think I'm going to go ahead and watch Loki, probably take a nap because this is what always happens when I sit down on the couch to watch TV or read or do anything, which is why uh, Wednesday and Thursday's vlog was not too hot because I sat down to read and fell asleep. Um, so we're probably going to watch Loki, take a nap, pet Merlin some more, and uh, then we'll read some more spooky books tonight. I come to you from the couch, in probably a crooked position again because the tripod is on the couch, um, with a update, change of plans. So I got a message from Bethany at Beautifully Bookish Bethany, who I will link down below, that said, Hey, don't forget our live show for Summer Assault by Katrina Leno is tonight at 830. And I went, I fuck. I'm only at like 26% of that book. So I need to read that. Um, does it count for the Summer Scare Readathon? Sure, there's magic. There's orange on the cover, so that'll cover the orange on the cover prompt in case I never make it to the book I was going to read for that. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, that's what we're going to do now. We're going to forego reading the two sweep series books and try to finish some result before the live show tonight. Genius. Uh, wish me luck. I'm sure it'll be fine, but... Um, it's, uh, 2.30 now, so I've got six hours. That should be fine. Uh, but I have many other things I need to do between now and then. Off I go. To my own doom, I suppose. I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna read Summer Assault now, apparently. So, I just finished Summer of Salt. You know, I'm not really sure... I'm not really sure how I feel about it. Well, firstly, I should say I, I, I really enjoyed it. So, like, there's that. But also, like, I'm not sure that it is what I expected it to be, I guess. It was definitely different from what I was expecting. I don't really know what I was expecting, but it wasn't what I got, okay? Much like the other Katrina Leno book that I read this week, um, it has that thing that I love where... It's our world with a little bit of paranormal in it, though the other book is questionably paranormal. Uh, this one definitely is. So I love that aspect of books. Like, those are my favorite kind of books to read. Um, things that are like, I think the term we're using now is either f fabulism or contemporary fantasy or uh, I don't, we don't really have a word for it that we can all agree upon, uh, but you know, where it's magic in a contemporary setting, but not a paranormal, if that makes sense. Because to me, like, paranormal is like, well, I guess it would be that type of paranormal, because it would be witches, so I'm having an existential crisis about this, this, the, how to claim this book, uh, so let's not do that anymore. Anyway, moving on. It definitely had themes that I wasn't expecting, I guess. They're, like, the book took a turn, and and I wasn't expecting that turn, but I did really enjoy it. And I'm glad that I have more Katrina Leno books that I can read and enjoy. I have, um, what else do I have? I have The Lost and Found and Everything All at Once, 
literally just like randomly have been buying Katrina Leno books for years and never reading them so that's fun and then I read two in one week it's crazy but yeah so I really enjoyed it um it probably will be the last book I read for the readathon because it is a little after six and I need to have dinner and film a couple of videos and then the live shows at 8 30 so it probably will be the last thing I read for the readathon but it does have orange on the cover so it does cover the last prompt and I did read nine books this week just not the nine that I had been planning on reading so and that's okay because last year I tried to read 31 books in October which I think I only got to like 17 or 18 um, but I tried to read 31 books in October 31 spooky books in October and now I just have more of the sweep series to read in October for this year so it's not a bad thing right I have 10 books of the sweep series left to read and then I think I have two more yeah two more of the Sarah Normal series um that I can read so yes I'm already thinking ahead to what spooky books I'm gonna read in October that's fine we're really killing this year by the way like the TBR takedown this year is we're killing it I'm just I'm just very happy I'm very happy with my reads this week uh for the most part I've really enjoyed everything that I've read with one exception uh, but it's been it's been a good week it's been a good reading week I mean nine books in one week who can complain right I will do a wrap-up probably tomorrow just in case I read something else tonight probably won't but you never know I might finish Medusa tonight I have wanted to finish that I'm gonna try to finish it by the end of the month but we'll see what happens with that also um, but if I have some time tonight I might pick it up and finish it because I only have like half left and because I finished Summer of Salt, that means I get to start something new tomorrow. Do I start with Shadow? I'm not really ready for it. Like, I've read the first couple of chapters because I had a chapter sampler. Um, so I've read those. But I am i don't think I'm emotionally prepared for Witch Shadow quite yet. And I might take a couple days off of reading because, I mean, I read nine books in seven days. Which is usually what happens after I read a bunch of books. I take some time off. Um, I've also got audiobooks for... Um, the newest Saba to hear and A Darker Shade of Magic that I need to get to. A Darker Shade of Magic would be a reread for me. That's Merlin flipping out outside the door. Oh, I didn't tell you. I tried to read last night. Um, I tried to read uh, Loki, The God Who Fell to Earth, which was a release earlier this year. Uh, mainly it's a comic about Loki, uh, mainly because it has a rainbow on the cover and I need um, a book to fill the prompt of rainbow colors on the cover. Uh, and nothing I've read this month that I can use for that board has had that. Um, so I was like, oh, I'll just read this quick little uh, comic. And, and I didn't like it, so I quit reading it halfway through. Um, so that was a thing that also happened this week, as far as reading goes. I don't know why I keep rambling, but I, I'm feeling very rambly. So I'm going to go figure out what the cat wants and make some dinner. I move on with my evening and uh, you'll either see me later tonight with an update for if I decide to read more or tomorrow for an update or a wrap up for a wrap up of my week. I am honestly not sure what the last clip was. Uh, either way, hi, time to talk about the books that we did read. I'm going to talk about the Sarah Normal books together. Um, I gave books two and three both four stars and book four I gave five stars. Two and three were both really good. They built up the world a little more. There was actually some really good plot lines in here that I enjoyed. I really liked this. Uh, book four was amazing. There was like this huge plot twisty thing in the epilogue or in the prologue rather. Not in the epilogue. That'd be weird. In the prologue there was like a huge plot twisty thing and it like played out through the book perfectly and I just really loved this one. This one gets real creepy. We get more of like the background of why Sarah can see what she sees and who else in her life could see them and it's just there's a lot of beautiful things in this one. Um, so I overall really enjoyed these three. Um, this one made me cry. <coughs> Not that anyone is surprised. Um, but yeah, really enjoyed these three. Uh, Blood Witch, as you're probably aware, if you've ever been on this channel before, you know that this is reread for me. Uh, this is one of my all-time favorite series, so, you know, it was a reread for me. Um, I loved this. I think it still deserves, I think it still deserves its original rating, which I believe was a 4.75 way back in the day when I originally read this. Um, yeah, absolutely love this book, love this series. Cannot recommend enough. 
they're fantastic. Uh, vampires never get old, which I don't even know if I talked about in the beginning, but anyway, uh, vampires never get old. I ended up giving a 3.5 out of 5 stars. There were some that I really enjoyed and some that I don't even remember right now um, that were just real bad. So um, my Goodreads review, which will be linked down below, has like all of the like ratings per story if you're interested in that. Horrid I really enjoyed. I ended up giving a 4 out of 5 stars. Um, part of the reason why Horrid didn't rate higher with how much I enjoyed it is I hate the cover. Like the original cover of this, this is an inverted cover. Um, I really don't like the cover of Horrid. Like I gave it like a 1. I really don't like it. Um, it's just a personal preference thing. I understand that like it works for the story but I didn't like it. So um, that's part of the reason why I got such a low rating even though I really 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 enjoyed this book. I think that the characters are done well. I like the plot twists at the end. I like that haunted house feel. I the, It's my jam. Like when you don't know if a house is actually haunted or not. I love those feels so this was this was a book for me. Beyond the Ruby Veil vale, I ended up giving this a 2.75 out of 5 stars. Um, I will probably read the sequel but I really hate the main character. Like I just I, I don't like her. Um, I believe I talked about this in like the actual clips. Um, I don't mind a character that is unlikable but I need that character to be redeemable and I there's nothing in this that makes me believe that she's a redeemable character. Um, it just it's it's just too much. There was too much going on um, and, and I just don't uh, yeah it just didn't work for me and that's okay. It was still okay. It just wasn't great. It wasn't terrible. Um, I don't feel like it was a waste of my time. I liked the world building. Um, I just I just really don't like any of the characters and I'm sure I mentioned this before also. Um, just you know seeing the characters through her eyes meant that I didn't like any of the other characters either because she hated everybody. So 2.75. Sherling's Alley I loved. I gave a 4.75 out of 5. Um, this book was fantastic. I loved the characters. I loved just showing that, you know, adults don't have all of their shit together either. We're allowed to have fears. We're allowed to grow. We're allowed to overcome things. It's not just strictly YA. It's okay. It's okay to have YA themes in adult books because you know what? We don't all fucking turn 18 and magically grow up and have all of our shit together. It, it doesn't work that way. So... I really enjoyed this. It made me cry. I, I had all of the feels. This book was so dang good. And then the last book was Summer Assault by Katrina Leno. Again, my second Katrina Leno ever and also in the same week. And I ended up giving that a 4.25 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed it. It didn't turn out the way that I expected. The second half of it was a lot different from what I was expecting. But I really liked the direction that it took and I really liked where things ended up at. I think that it, it definitely worked for me. Um, I really enjoyed it and I do plan to read more of Leno's works. I have two of her other three books um, so I do plan to read those in the future. Um, pretty excited to get to those and I will be buying a copy of Summer Assault to add to my collection at some point because I really enjoyed it. Um, definitely want to have a copy of that for my shelves. So that was my week. Let me know in the comments below if you participated in the readathon, if you have a video feel free to let me know and I'll come check it out. Um, if you posted about it on your Instagram, feel free to leave your Instagram handle down below. I'll check it out. Um, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, thoughts about any of the books that I read, if you want to know more, if you want to talk spoilers about something, feel free to DM me on Instagram. All that's linked down below. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm here to talk about books with y'all, so feel free to reach out. That's why we're here. That is all I have today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a couple of times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!